So you see that trend going through to a luxury car, and I'm suggesting a car like mm. a 300 series BMW or yeah. a car that uh, looks very sporty and has a great uh, uh, trendy interior, but doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles. Yeah, y you know, one of the great things about uh, our brand, and, and I said that we're globalizing our platforms, mm -hmm. we're building the same cars globally, is we can bring down the cost uh, for consumers, and we can put technology on entry-level cars. So the technology that you're used to seeing in BMWs and Mercedes and Lincolns, right. uh, we've got that same technology in entry-level cars, Fiestas, Focuses. Our entry-level cars aren't beer cans. Uh, you know, you might find that in some of the competitors that have low, low price ranges. We have well-equipped vehicles that are high quality, high safety, great technology, so the average consumer can afford those. Sure. Uh, and it's exciting purchase for them now when they come into our showroom. And you have the Focus Electric coming along with a lot of other electric somethings coming. Yeah. In the yeah. industry. So tell me about the Focus Electric. When's yeah. it arriving? Well, it arrives in 2012. Uh, we're excited about it. We, we've got a lot of electric vehicles. Electrified platforms are, are really on the cutting edge today, but it's it's still very early in the evolution of electrified vehicles. So there's hybrid vehicles that are in the market, and we think those are going to be very viable over the next five to ten years. Electric vehicles are going to come to market, but there's so much work that has to be done uh, from government, from industry, from stakeholders uh, to put infrastructure in place to support those. Now that said, uh, we've got some great opportunity in that in those arenas. We've got a, uh, a compact a van now it's called the Transit Connect that's electric. Matter of fact, we've done our first couple of deliveries. Not a Canadian Post took delivery of, of one of those units just a month ago. Uh, as we look at electric cars, though, the Focus is an all-new mm. electric that gets 160 kilometers per charge, and it charges in three hours, and that'll be available next three year. Three hours. We just have to have some place to plug it in. Yeah. And <laughs> enough electricity <laughs> to run all these electric cars supposedly we're going mm. to be driving. Will they go to the point where you drive an electric truck? Mm. Uh, I think so. Is that possible? I, it is possible, and I think so. I think you're going to see more hybrids in that arena, and then eventually you'll see electric. I think you're going to see electric, electric platforms across all vehicles, okay. all manufacturers, all makes. But again, it's probably a decade away from, from seeing that level of proliferation. And the reason why is infrastructure. There's no place to charge them. 90% uh, of Canadians don't park cars inside. They park them outside. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not like you can run an extension cord from your garage out to your car. It's, that's not going to happen. Uh, so there has to be infrastructure put in place at work, uh, at grocery stores, at malls, mm -hmm. uh, and at home to be able to support that. There's legislation in place, to, even here in Vancouver, to support it, but it's very slow adaption. And what's happening in Europe, in Japan, and other places? Well, we know what's yeah. happening in Japan, but yeah. uh, without the earthquake uh, in the other countries, in Asia, in South America, electric car-wise. Yeah, they're moving faster. Uh, now, that said, I think the most electrified city in North America is going to be San Francisco. They've got legislation in place. And they've got a lot of funds from the Obama administration to support it. They're putting in 5,000 charging stations in downtown right. San Francisco. Wow. Uh, so they'll have infrastructure to support drivers. They'll have preferred parking for, for drivers. Mm -hmm. They also give them free access to uh, to uh, HOV lanes in California, which is which is multiple, pass multiple passenger lanes if you have electric vehicles. So there's a lot of support for that industry uh, in the U.S. We haven't seen that level of support yet in Canada. There's opportunity to do mm -hmm. that. We need the government, we need uh, power providers, grid providers, uh, and then we need uh, manufacturers to all get together and collaborate mm -hmm. on those on those plans going forward. Okay, I ask a question in the uh, uh, stand-up. Uh, whether or not you drive a Lincoln or a, an electric car. Well, I guess yeah. electric car is out because it's not available <laughs> Next yet. year I'll drive an electric Next car. Next year. <laughs> uh, what about the Lincoln? Because yeah. Ford owns Lincoln, right? Yeah, we do own Lincoln. Jeremy Cato tries to yeah. keep me straight about who, own, who owns whom. Yeah. You don't own Volvo? Yeah, uh, don't own Volvo no. anymore. No, we tried to keep, well, I, I think I set Jeremy straight as well yesterday because uh, Lincoln outsold Cadillac last year. Uh, for the first time in many years. And we've really? been out selling Cadillac uh, predominantly for about a year and a half in Canada. So the brand is flourishing. Uh, there's a lot of new opportunity for the brand. And we'll have seven freshened or new vehicles within the Lincoln brand okay. over the next two years. And the brand is so important today, as you know. And I think Lincoln. I think my rich daddy. Yeah. Somehow. I don't think uh, my rich girlfriend. Yeah. I think my rich daddy drives, <laughs> drives a Lincoln. Well. 
We, we want it to be your, your it, you don't have to be rich to drive a Lincoln. Uh, it's affordable luxury. Okay. Uh, and we're, we're not priced in the, in the upper stratosphere of the industry, but we have uh, all of the luxury characteristics of the very, very high-end cars, uh, and we have the technology in our Lincolns. But what about the points. female market? Uh, gearing to the female market, make a car, car for a girl, a mm -hmm. woman. Yeah. Uh, do you think about that in the uh, discussions, in the brainstorming? Yeah. What are the women going to buy? Because women drive the market yeah. very much. You know, much. we have uh, probably... If not themselves. I would say that... When we, they go with you. We have a very high representation of female designers in our product community. Mm. Uh, and they're the ones that really worked on vehicles like the Explore, uh, the vehicles like the C-Max that are coming to market, and a lot of the characteristics of our, of our new focus. So uh, we have a lot of integration, a lot of support, and a lot of dialogue uh, uh, in okay. terms of diversity with input. So the Ford Explorer goes to Whistler, uh, goes in the snow, all-wheel drive what? Yeah, it does anything. It, it, it's a every all-purpose vehicle. Uh, it's all-wheel drive, four-wheel drive. Uh, it still has the same characteristics of the old Explorer. However, it gets 23% better fuel economy. The new Explorer uh, gets almost 30 miles to a gallon, mm. uh, and the price point on it is 29,900 in Canada. So below $30,000 for a seven passenger sport utility uh, is really unheard of. And then when you get one that pushes the 30 miles per gallon uh, uh, number in Canada, it means great sure. value for consumers. And then when you get in it, the technology is unbelievable. Mm. And on a bad day for you, you're sitting in your office, phone ring says, we're going to recall the Fiesta or something. That's a bad day? Well, we don't get those calls, right? Okay, we are higher quality today, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So we haven't had those call calls in a while. Uh, we have very high levels of quality, and we're very proud of that too. We spend a lot of time uh, focused on quality at the company because that means a better ownership experience for our consumers, and actually the lower cost of ownership for our consumers mm -hmm. as well. And the and the value of our vehicles are up over $4,000 on average just over the last two years because our vehicles, again, the quality is resonating, the value of our, our vehicles are stronger for consumers, so when they go back in the, the dealership with the, with the used vehicles, they're improving, so it's worth more for the trade-in. And the hot color this year, is there one? Well, there's always hot color. Silver is probably one of the top colors, white, black, uh, but the hot color to me is red, the bright cherry red. Uh, your favorite color, and we've yeah. got one of those at the show. Hey, the I'm Candy Apple Red. Candy Apple. You know when I was born. We can make a Candy Apple Red for you. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thanks nice for to see you me. again. Okay. Enjoy the show. Thank I know you, you will. <laughs> uh, David Mondragon, and he is the president and CEO of uh, Ford in Canada.